a couple videos ago, people said you guys could do to get more controversial. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna get more Here controversial. Here you go. Here you go. You asked for this. Politics. Pride. Pride. Money. Instant gratification. You guys, you are being stupid. Hey guys, I'm Eric. And I'm Grace. We're the Wandering Ravens. We're a couple of digital nomads that have been wandering around the world for over three years, and we make videos about travel and culture. If either of those topics interests you, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon so that you can get notified every time we release a new video. Today, we are going to be introducing you to 10 things that Americans, <coughs> we hate about America. <laughs> First, a disclaimer. America is a great country with lots of good people in it, but just like every other country, there are things about the United States that suck. So here they are. This is our list of 10 things that we hate or at least strongly dislike about the United States. The me first attitude. Americans are very proud of their individualism, and while individualism does have a lot of perks, like, hey, Americans are really great at coming up with innovative solutions for complex problems and thinking outside of the box, this strong individualism does have a few downsides, and one of them is this me-first attitude. A lot of Americans have trouble thinking beyond themselves or their very immediate family, very immediate community, and thinking about the community at large. They're very self-focused in terms of how is policy or things gonna affect me, and they have a hard time, they seem to have a hard time, thinking about others. Which sounds harsh, but here's a clip which kind of illustrates what we're trying to say. This video is from Jubilee. Many of the people who own homes, they're not allowed to water their lawns. Why? Because of environmental regulation laws, which are suppressing, again, suppressing the natural right to use water. I can remember that from a few years ago. And the reason they put that regulation in was because the snowpack wasn't there for that year. It's not like it was a random year where the government just said, start charging people for water. It's because the effect of climate change, one of the aspects of it is that we are not seeing consistent seasons. So in this video, we have a group of climate change activists and climate change skeptics, and they're debating about government policy. And what the activists are saying is that sometimes it's necessary to put limits on how much water you use so that you can conserve water and think, you know, take care of the community at large. And the skeptics are saying, you know, oh, but this limits my right to water my grass, or this infringes on my freedom to do this thing. And it's a, I think that's a really good example of this me first attitude that a lot of Americans have where I don't care about the community at large. I don't care if we're gonna run out of water. I care about my lawn. For a more recent example, we can look to the whole a situation with mm -hmm. people refusing to self-isolate, stay at home, with all of the panic buying, it's all just about, well, what if I can't get toilet paper or something? There's no, if I continue buying as a normal consumer would, then there will be no shortage on things. Instead, mm -hmm. there's panic, everyone's grabbing and thinking only about themselves as opposed to thinking about their neighbor and how their actions are going to affect other people. During our travels, we spent a lot of time in Asia. We spent two years living in South Korea, a lot of time in Japan, and in those cultures, there's a very strong emphasis on how, yes, you're an individual, but at the same time, your actions impact everyone in the country, everyone in the community. And so when people in those cultures make decisions or do things, they do it from a more community-oriented position, I guess. Mm -hmm. What would you say about that? Yeah, exactly. And in Asian cultures, a lot of the time, your position in a group is what matters a lot more than your individual identity. Now, of course, that has its own problems, which we could probably yes. spend hours <laughs> talking about. But I do think that there is a healthy point at which you do think of your actions in regards to how they're going to affect other people. And that thinking works, which is why South Korea and Japan are two of the safest countries in the world. Question for you, how do you think that the United States could achieve a balance of individualism where we value the individual person and what they wanna do, but at the same time, we have that community focused view. Is there a way that we can achieve that in the States? Let us know down below. If there's a European country that has achieved that, 
let us know down below because we want to visit. Addiction to convenience. This is another thing that really bugs us about the states is how addicted to convenience everyone is. And you can see this in how people fight over parking spots that are close to the grocery store. You can see it in how people always buy things on the end of store aisles instead of, you know, just like walking down. The stuff on the end sells best. You can see it in how dr many drive-throughs there are. It has infiltrated so many different aspects of just daily life mm -hmm. from like Uber Eats, Amazon Prime, you have things in two days maximum. Everything super yeah. instant, super I, fast. Mm -hmm. And you, we mentioned this in our last video, which you can watch here, where if people aren't greeted as soon as they sit down at a restaurant table, they get mad. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been waiting for two minutes and the server isn't here. I want my meal for free. Instant gratification. Oh, good word. Yes, instant yeah. gratification. Yeah. Even with the fact that people don't want to walk places. If some somewhere is a five minute walk away, they'd rather drive 60 seconds to get there. Even if it's seven minutes driving, but five minutes walking. Mm -hmm. Like if you have to get in the car, drive, find a parking spot, get out of the car. Yeah. yeah, you would still rather drive than walk. A lot of Americans, again, not all, but a lot of Americans are addicted to convenience and that is not a good character trait. Toughen up, guys. Toughen up. Question for you. Do you understand what we're talking about here with the addiction to convenience? Mm -hmm. Is there an addiction to convenience in your country? Let us know down below. Lack of public transportation. Now, we've mentioned this one several times before, but unless you live in a bustling city in the US, you are going to have very infrequent bad public transit, which really sucks because it forces you to own car. Mm -hmm. You're basically stranded. If you don't have a car, you can't do life. We tried it. We went back to the States for a few months after we left Korea and before coming to Europe. And while we were there, we were like, we're not going to use a car. We're just going to rely on public transportation. And it was hard. It was impossible. Yeah. We ended up having to get a car. <laughs> Politics. Basically, no matter which side of the aisle you're on in America, you are unhappy when it comes to politics. Everything feels partisan. The news, the sports, you really cannot get away from politics in America. And every single election, it feels like you're just voting for the lesser of two evils, which is a really bad feeling. It's very rare that you ever have a politician come along that you actually feel like throwing yourself behind and being like, yeah, this is someone who stands for what I believe in. And it's a circus. It is. And you have to laugh to keep yourself from crying. Another thing I hate about politics in the United States is that the political bubbles are so frickin' strong. So Republicans never talk to Democrats and Democrats never talk to Republicans. There is no cooperation. No one reaches across the aisle. Everyone exists in these echo chambers uh, and you know, their Facebook feed is all the same like-minded people. Their friends are all the same like-minded people. I saw this thing where it was like, if you voted for this particular person, I will unfriend you sort of thing. So it yeah. is just creating a giant echo chamber. So many people act like this. Like this is an example of what we're talking about. You're gonna be dividing a group of strangers into Republicans and Democrats. Uh-huh, so good and evil. <laughs> I think I'm gonna do great. I think I'm gonna badger some Republicans. I'm here to make some conservatives turn red. I think she's a Democrat. I think everyone's a Democrat. I wanna be everyone's friend. Okay, so if I wasn't a Democrat, we couldn't be cool then? You I mean, friend? we might just argue too much. I don't have the chance to talk much to um, people who are sort of on the right side of things because I don't know many personally. Exactly. <clears throat> Our point. Our point. Yeah. And both sides do this. Republicans are slimy dirtbags that caricature the left as little Satans, but then the left is also a bunch of slimy dirtbags <laughs> that caricatures the right as a bunch of little Adolf Hitlers. But that's not true. Most people in America have good intentions. They're good people that are just trying to take care of their families and they want to take care of their community. But there's just these chasms of misunderstanding between both sides and neither side cares about closing them. Moving on. Rant over. Oh no. Every time we start ranting, I'm like, oh dear, how are people going to take this? You can tell this is one of the things we definitely hate about America. Yes. Question for you. If you are not American, what do you think about American politics? I know a lot of European countries and a lot of people around the world are very well read on American politics. So drop your opinions down below. If you think we're misguided or we're being too harsh, let us know. This is a learning opportunity for everyone involved. Yes. 
please be kind. Slow Wi-Fi. After living in Korea and Japan, which have some of the highest Wi-Fi speeds in the world, we cannot get over how freaking slow American Wi-Fi is. <laughs> We're digital nomads, we need the Wi-Fi. And when it's like, you run a speed test and it's like, point eight Mbps. Not even a full one. Not even a full <laughs> one at our homes, at cafes, yeah. literally anywhere. In the States. Trying to find Wi-Fi is a nightmare. In Korea, it was common. You just go to a cafe, you go to a coffee shop, you sit down, open up your laptop, and your Wi-Fi speed, 200, 250 Mbps. In the States, you are lucky if you find 10 Mbps. 50 Mbps? That's not even Hallelujah. a thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's like a miracle. I know the reason for that is that a lot of communities in the States don't have access to fiber optic cables and all the things necessary for high speed Wi-Fi. But, you know, it is, it just kind of sucks. I wouldn't put this in the things that we hate, just the things we strongly dislike. And yes. I started tapping into my French accent there. Oh no, <laughs> just the things, the things that we strongly dislike. Grace was practicing French before we started this video. I was. The lack of money sense. Okay, so I'm gonna try not to rant here, but this is another issue in America that I hate, and it really just gets my goat. And what do I mean by a lack of money sense? Well, here are some statistics that will help. 60 to 70% of Americans have less than $1,000 in savings. 45% of Americans have $0 saved. Zero. That's almost half of all Americans have yeah. literally no savings. Not a dollar in their bank account. Oh my goodness. Not a dollar. I'm gonna get controversial on you guys. A couple videos ago, people said you guys could do to get more controversial. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna get more Here controversial. You go. Here you go. You asked for this. So to help you understand why this makes me so mad, here's a chart. So on this chart, you can see here's the poorest Americans over here on this end. On this end, we have the richest Americans. Now, where are most Americans? Most Americans are here in the middle and they're making a decent amount of money and they are saving none of it. Most of these people here in the middle have zero dollars saved and if they do, it's less than a thousand dollars. These people could afford to save some money, but they don't. I understand if you're making a little bit of money and you're in a tight circumstance and you're coming from a background of poverty, it's gonna be hard for you to save money. But there are people who make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and don't have any savings. There's this lack of money sense where people just don't save money and it boggles my mind. I don't understand it. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> we don't make that much money. We started a business this year writing, doing copywriting online, and so we don't make that much money because we're starting a business. But every month we make sure that we're saving money, we live frugally, we're minimalists, so we try to stay as minimalist as possible. You may have noticed I wear the same shirt in every video. It's because <laughs> I have one shirt. <laughs> I have one shirt. We're conservative with our money. We're thinking about the future. Mm -hmm. And we've always made it a huge priority to have an emergency fund so that when circumstances all of a sudden come along and everyone's confined to their houses and you lose a lot of mm -hmm. clients or whatever mysteriously, you don't have to be super stressed because mm -hmm. you know I've been preparing for such a time as this. Yeah. We'll be okay. But so many of our friends back in the States have been like, we don't have any money. I don't have any savings. And I'm like, wait, you have a good job. You're not married, you don't have kids, you don't have debt, you don't have all these things. Where the frick is your money going? Again, we're not criticizing low income families. No, not at all, because it makes sense if you are in a position where you cannot be saving money. If you're not mm -hmm. saving money, we cannot, like nobody holds that against you. Yeah. It's if you can be saving money and you just are too careless or irresponsible to think that, oh, in two days, I could get into a serious car accident and I could need thousands of dollars in medical care or something yeah. like this. If you do not have the foresight to plan for the future, that's who we're getting after right now. You guys, you are being stupid. Save money. <laughs> All right. Continue. Moving on. Question for you. What is money sense like in your country? Do people in your country prioritize saving or are you like America where you have a problem with debt and no savings? Drop your comments down below and let us know what the situation is like for you. Tipping. We've gone on several rants about <laughs> tipping in previous videos. So there, I guess there's no need to really get into it, but 
After living outside of the USA, whenever we return home, tipping is an aspect of American culture that we really hate. So many awkward feelings. It's not a fun, not a fun it's experience. Not. Just put a flat rate on the bill, let me know how much my meal is, and get rid of the tipping. Get rid of the tipping. We don't need that. Do it. It's never gonna happen, but it's nice yeah. to fantasize. Extreme opinions. I think, I think we kind of um, confirmed this one. Yeah, I was just gonna say <laughs> oh, <no>. that. <laughs> In case you haven't already realized it in watching this video, Americans have r really extreme opinions about things. But what we're harping on about in this point is that a lot of Americans have extreme opinions about things that they shouldn't have extreme opinions about. I would say the average American doesn't think, no. Ever. No, not, not what I was gonna Ever. say. What was I was gonna say. <laughs> I, see, I, I ended my sentence in the wrong place. That's not where I was gonna end my sentence. <laughs> what I was going to say was that a lot of Americans don't think in terms of grays. In America, there's not a lot of issues where people, you'll ask someone about it and they'll say, yeah, that's kind of a gray issue, you know? I can mm -hmm. see that there might be some pros and cons to that situation. You won't get that answer in America. Every single issue in America is a black and white issue. What's, what's an example? Climate change, I guess. Either you believe in it or you think oh, yeah. it's just a government hoax. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good one. And so you have these extreme opinions and you don't, there's no middle ground. There's not really any middle ground. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are really strong opinions about issues that the individual has not read a lot about. So yes. for example, you will have a strong, <laughs> a super strong opinion about something that you're not really entitled to have a strong opinion about because your knowledge in the, on the area is very small. And for me, that's been a learning, opportunity because I feel that it is encouraged to have your mind made up on every single issue so that when somebody mm -hmm. asks you, you have an answer. But I think a more healthy approach is admitting that you don't know or that you are not well enough read on that topic mm -hmm. to give an informed opinion. What I've been trying to do for myself is just say initially, this is my opinion, but I'm not well enough read on that to mm -hmm. like, have a strong opinion either way. And that's kind of one of the motivations for this YouTube channel is we like putting ourselves out there for you guys to batter and pick apart because we know that not all of our opinions are right. We know that we don't know all of the reasonings behind UK culture and American differences and these issues around the world. And so we really appreciate the opportunity to interact with you guys in the comment section, learn from you, expand our mind, get book suggestions from you and all that sort of thing. It's all part of the, the pursuit of knowledge. I, did, I do think you made a really good point though in that in the States, I would say again, not all Americans, but the vast majority of Americans are afraid of the sentence, I don't know. That's not something you'll ever hear them say. Get it over. Yeah, they know. They always know. They'll claim an answer, because better that than to show your ignorance. Ignorance is a good thing, as long as you're not proud of it. Admit your ignorance and try to change. Mm -hmm. Healthcare costs. As we have mentioned in other videos, the cost of healthcare in the United States is extremely expensive. Now, if Eric and I made less than $22,000 or so per year. As a married couple, we would qualify for state health insurance. That is something that a lot of people don't realize about America is that America does have very good free government health care for low income people. I do know a lot of people are like, oh, you know, low income people in the States are just dying in the streets. They rather die than call an ambulance. That's not true. There's actually really, really good health insurance options that are paid for by the government if you're low income. Uh, when we were low income, we had government health care and paid for dental, for vision, for <clears throat> doctor's checkups, everything was covered. Yeah, literally everything. We felt like royalty when we had that because yeah. everything was covered. But if you make more than $22,000 a year per household. As so, a married couple. Yeah, as yeah. a married couple, then you have to go on the hunt for health insurance. And it varies a lot in cost and quality and what they cover. For example, you could find a cheap health insurance that costs $150 a month, but that is only gonna cover emergency room costs. Mm -hmm. It won't cover anything else. No checkups, no prescriptions, no dental, no nothing else. 
But then if you want to get a more expensive health insurance, even if you go to $500, $600 per month health insurance per couple, then you've got to check the insurance very carefully to make sure that it covers the things that you want. I don't know if there is an insurance that covers everything. If there is, it's probably $900 a month, really yeah. expensive. And if you just want to skip insurance and pay out of pocket, then that's going to run you thousands of dollars if you ever get actually need health insurance. So a lot of young people in America forego health insurance because it is really expensive. And they're just like, eh, I'm young, I'm healthy, I don't need it. But then if they break a leg and go to the emergency room and have to be in the hospital overnight, you know, that person is bankrupt. The America-centric attitude. This is reflected in how a lot of Americans believe that America is the best at everything, that no other country can even come close to competing with America. I mean, hey, we did go to the moon though, so I mean, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Next video, 10 things we love about America. Number one, the moon. Wallace and Gromit did go to the moon too though. Yes, but did he put a British flag up there though? That's true, I don't think. Didn't. So the moon is ours. Wallace did not plant a flag. <laughs> did you guys a great disservice, Brits. In all seriousness though, Americans, well, not all Americans, again, got to clarify, not all Americans, but there is a large subset of Americans which have this hyperinflated opinion of the United States, where they think that the US is the best at everything, literally everything. You know, another country does a thing, the US can do it better. Another country accomplishes a certain thing, ah yes, but the US did this. There are kind of several beliefs that are associated with this. For example, one, the one I mentioned, which is that America is the greatest and best at everything. And another one is that everyone wants to be American. A lot of people in this group believe that all around the world, there are just these people standing on shores, looking across the ocean at America and saying, if only I could be American. And that in every city and in every town and in every village around the world, there is a boy and a girl and they are dreaming and their dream is the American dream. There's not just every single person around the world having the same dream as the American dream. That'd yeah. be kind of a foolish thing because everyone's raised in an entirely different culture and with entirely different values. So of course you're gonna have your own dream based off of the culture and values of your country. And that's something that a lot of Americans seem to forget. Other people want different things. Not everyone wants to be an American. Not everyone wants the same things that an American wants. And that's okay. Let's wrap this video up. We've gone a bit long. We've had some rants. I'm sorry, it got a bit heated. I know a lot of Americans might hop onto here and say, well, you guys are being unpatriotic. But guys, here's the thing. You've got to be harsh to the things you love. The reason why we're being harsher in this video than maybe we would be if we made a similar video about the UK or Korea or other countries is that we are American. We are more prepared to be harsh about issues that have directly affected us as opposed to other countries' issues which we have to learn about in adulthood and which haven't always been present in our lives. Critiquing America is not the same thing as hating America. So settle down, Karen. I can still say the Wi-Fi is slow and still love America. And as proponents of free speech, you should be able to accept us exercising that right here. Hey, gotcha. gotcha. And now we're gonna turn the conversation over to you. If there is something that you dislike about America, drop your comments down below. This is a space for us to air our grievances. Or if you disagree with something we said, come at us, bro. Like, we're, we're open to changing our opinions. Again, I'm Eric. And I'm Grace. We're the Wandering Ravens. And we have a goal of getting this channel to 10,000 subscribers by the time our isolation period here due to Christ comes to a conclusion. So if you want to help us hit that goal and continue spreading great culture content around the internet, Click subscribe, hit the bell icon so that you get notified every time we release a new video. And make sure to give this video a thumbs up as well as that helps the YouTube algorithm promote our content and show it to more people. So if you would like this video to get spread around the internet, make sure you hit the like. And don't be afraid to share this video with an American that has a too high of an opinion of themselves. We will see you guys next time. Bizu. I actually got stressed out there during that rant. I'm sorry. Can you tell? Yeah, a little bit. I know. I'm sorry about that, guys. I actually got mad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next.